Got a big week, it's the last week of the year. Get as much done as possible. Fun to do, I'll give you a quick rundown on my itinerary, comma. I think we should have higher script on camera than we can. What's up world? Stand tall. Stand up. This is called Root Reboot. I got my lyrics over here. Normally I 20 years ago, what qualified you to be CEO? It wasn't the digital marketing expertise. It wasn't even. It's uh, eight o'clock. This is my, these are my course outlines. <laughs> it kind of looks like a camera. <laughs> and from that, I learned every valuable hard lesson. That you yeah, I just interviewed this guy. He's a, a coach in. It's nap time. Big moment. Not that big. Merch in the mail. Successfully unemployed. So I'm gonna hop on one of their investor calls tomorrow morning. Yes, they asked me to coach. Um, just call me coach now. So we're talking with business expert here, Jeff Lerner. Uh, you've helped on me thousands of entrepreneurs. Physical, personal, and professional excellence. It's Monday morning, we got another, another week ahead of us. It's the first week, uh, what's the date? Like, uh, 28th or something. Got a big week. It's the last week of the year. Get as much done as possible. Hit as much of our marks as possible before the end of the year. Biggest year of our lives coming up next year. Gotta get ready. It's the calm before the storm. But it's gonna be a pretty hectic calm. People have been trying to tell me to take take time off. No! God, please, no! No! But, uh, but it's go time. It's go time. I got, uh, I got a world to change, right? Alright. I'm gonna brush my teeth. So, uh... We're heading to the gym. It's 4.06 a.m. Already running super late this morning. Ah, super late, I guess. I'm running, I feel like I'm about 10, 15 minutes behind because I forgot I was supposed to start the vlog again this week and I had to get the camera. I had to go find it and find the battery and I don't know, all the stuff to set that up. Yeah, so it's just a Monday morning. Monday mornings are hectic. Got a ton to do. I'll give you a quick rundown on my itinerary and then probably won't check back in until it's all done just because I got so much to do. That's the hard thing about having a vlog and running a business when your business is not being a vlogger. Like some people, it's their business is to document their life. For me, I'm trying to document it while I do this other huge, really t time consuming thing and still be like a dad and present in my other life too. My point being the hard thing is that like when there's actual work that has to get done, sometimes I can't have the camera running. So yeah, this morning, quick rundown. I've got to do my check-in message with the Entra team, the internal uh, staff weekly address Monday mornings. I always do a weekly check-in with the mastermind. Usually try to check in with the mastermind every day of the week, but always, especially Monday mornings. So I gotta uh, record two messages. I have to obviously do my workout. I have to do my piano practice. I'm trying to finish writing a song for Jacqueline that I was supposed to have done in time for Christmas. And then obviously I got to prep for the morning calls. We have our, um, frankly, Adam, my partner actually does most of the agenda prep, but I kind of like got to prep at least my, my thoughts and contributions. We have our uh, partner call. We have our executive call. We have our leadership call. We have our operations call. We have two marketing calls, a pay, paid advertising call and a, a content organic marketing call probably some other calls i don't know busy day today but um i guess that's my morning all right peace i'm gonna go do it i'll check in later what's up guys mid-workout i'm here with my sadistic trainer Kid Cat. he's doing brutal uncouth things to me All right, so got out of the shower and I'm uh, in the zone here getting ready. I thought this morning would be a good opportunity to talk about systemization. It's kind of my obsession is like automating all the things in life that recur, that soak up so much of our time, but um, you know we don't really get any incremental reward. They're just like maintenance slash survival, you know, things we have to do, but they don't like advance our life. So just a quick uh, a quick touch on that point. I think I've shown this before, but this is my vitamin case. Little little hack. This is what my update this morning was about with the company. Uh, one of our core values is we are obsessed with improvement. So I'm trying to constantly improve and shave little little corners off the time-consuming pieces of my life. This is my vitamins. Um, so like, and I have them all loaded up with uh, within Amazon. So I can just if 
I run out of one, I can just literally pull it up on the app and reorder. It takes about 30 to 60 seconds to reorder any vitamin that I run out of. What else was I gonna share? Oh yeah, my meals. So like, and actually we're low today, but pretty much when I'm gonna go to, uh, when I go to work, I'll just grab, this is my little, my little drawer. So I got my little salad here and my muffins. I'm short on some meals, but normally I would just grab, and I've got a few at the office already, so I'll just grab those meals, take them to work. Those are uh, almond base muffins, low carb, low uh, glycemic load, minimal impact on blood sugar. So yeah, I'll grab those, go to work. I spend no time dealing with or prepping food. Oh, I say none, I mean minimal. And then uh, another thing is, let's see, so my face, I'm going through laser hair removal. Oh, sorry, I just almost stepped on, just almost stepped on my cat. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I'm going through laser hair removal because shaving, shaving is a thing that we all do, most of us. It's just this recurring, it's a low ROI use of time. So I'm going through laser hair removal on my face and uh, other places as well. You know, I figured that'll do two things, especially the face over the course of a life. I mean, it'll save me dozens, if not hundreds of hours so I get to where I don't have to shave. The small problem is because I'm older, some of my facial hair has started to get gray uh, or whitish and the laser hair removal process I'm doing only works on dark hair. So I'm getting all the dark hair removed as much as I can. Then I think I'm gonna have to go get electrolysis on the lighter hairs, which, you know, whatever. It's it's an investment, it's a bit of a chore. You know, I would say do the math. This is how I do all the, uh, this is what I'm constantly running through in my mind. It's like, what's the value of my time? You know, I'm at a place in my life now where the value of productive time is pretty high. So if I can recapture the shaving, time, you know, then it's it's worth it's worth the expense. Now, if my time was worth $10 an hour, it would probably be hard to justify spending thousands of dollars on laser hair removal, but you know, for where my time is worth now, if I can recapture even dozens of hours, uh, it's totally worth it. Yeah, I don't know. Automation, systemization, optimization, cutting all the little corners in life that can be cut so you can focus on excellence in the things in life that deserve excellence. Shaving is not a thing that deserves excellence. Shaving is just a thing we have to do. So if you can eliminate it, eliminate it. <laughs> now I'm uh, at the office getting ready to do my piano practice and I'm so stoked because I got this new setup here. Mic to the piano, the vocal mic, and uh, got my little audio set up here, but I'm missing a cable. So I'm torn. Do I sit here and practice? Or do I go to Walmart and get the cable that I need? Oh, what's up? A little midday check-in. Just uh, been banging it out, making, making it happen, getting some good work done. I'm planning these three courses. Uh, I can share with you briefly what that process looks like. So my, these are my course outlines, working on these courses. These will be available pretty soon, probably in the next month or two. You know, we're building a course called Millionaire Success Secrets, the fundamentals of success that unlock the world's riches and the joy of living. This is how I build curriculum. I uh, find good content around, I do research, I look at other courses, I look at videos out there, and then I just map out my own content plan and then I, I do a multiple passes. I'll go back through and flesh out more of these. Here's a Millionaire Lifestyle Secrets, another course. How to build an awesome life that fulfills your heart, fattens your bank account, and inspires others. And then finally, Millionaire Money Secrets. The money secrets you never learned in school to give you control of your income and your future. Get a little visual on how I how I do the, the work up here before I do all the talking on camera and you know visuals and everything. So that's what I've been working on all morning. I love teaching. I love it. It's just the best way to learn is to teach. I don't teach because I think I know so much. I teach because I want to know so much. I pick a subject and I want to go deep on that subject and having to organize and deliver the information on that subject in a way that empowers other people with it forces me to, to become a master of the subject matter. And it's just this constant upward spiral going around and around to touch back on these key things. How do I optimize and improve my lifestyle? How do I get more clear and focused on success principles? How do I get smarter about money? How do I get better with health? How do I become more excellent in communication and relationships and just constantly circling around these things and becoming more of a master because I have a responsibility, because I have students, I have paying customers that want this information from me, 
I, I can't be a hypocrite. I can't be some loser that goes out there with second rate information or second rate products claiming to be some sort of authority on these things. It's the teaching, uh, if you have integrity, teaching creates a standard for you. It creates an expectation that'll, that'll bring out your best. That, that's why I love teaching. It makes, you a, makes me a better learner to, to be a teacher. Six and a half hours later. It's uh, eight o'clock, just finished the Inner Circle Intensive, the private group session with our mastermind we do twice a month, and I just gotta share, we had this guy on, he's a really good friend of mine, his name's Dion McIntosh. He calls himself a perception architect, but he basically helps you get clarity and extract from your story and your unique, your unique human experience, like what it is that makes you uniquely valuable in the market and helping to get that clarity that suffuses your business. Anyways, we were working with everybody in the mastermind and just kind of taking things forward for them to get that clarity. And it's just, it was so powerful. I just literally was compelled to like document it for the vlog. I think that one of the great challenges in the world, and it shows up a lot in business, shows up a lot in with startup uh, entrepreneurs, but I think it shows up in a lot of other ways too, is people, myself included, having a tendency to not really understand what a valuable asset we are, I am, you are. That our unique quality as a human being, our, our unique experience, our DNA, our look, our sound, our vibe, our history, our story, our beliefs, it, it's infinitesimally improbable in terms of its uniqueness and that it should even exist, and yet it does. And so often people go into the market, this is a truth in business, people go into the market thinking that they need to compete on the same factors, the same features and benefits of their, quote, competition. In other words, I need to go compete because I do it bigger, I do it better, I do it faster, I do it smaller, I do it leaner, I do it more, I do it less, like whatever the competitive variables are, they think that's how they compete and they, they fail to appreciate that you literally can render competition to be an absurd concept to the extent that you blossom and express fully yourself as an individual. Because there's there's no competition for that. You know, if I was going out to market, I, I, I have an entrepreneurial education company, right? I'm, I'm up against, you know, technically, if, if, if they were writing a, if an investment bank was writing a research report on Entre Institute, they would say, well, he, he's in a space, he competes with, you know, Robert Kiyosaki, and he competes with Tony Robbins, and he competes with Russell Brunson, and maybe some personal development stuff, some business development stuff, some sales, maybe, nah, I don't, I don't compete with any of them because I refuse to be defined. In, in relation to any of them as my competition. The bottom line is Entre Institute is simply a natural outward expression of Jeff and a bunch of people and, and resources and amazing team members and an amazing community. A lot of stuff that we've rallied and kind of galvanized and, and surrounded, but it's the, the word, the idea of competition is irrelevant. It's, it's not even irrelevant, it's, it's absurd, it's nonsense. To the extent that I lean in to my uniqueness as a CEO, as a founder, as a brand, as a leader, and this is true for everyone, in every aspect of their life. I don't know, that was that was my takeaway. It was a powerful meeting, hope that's of value. It's after eight, been up since 3.30. No, didn't get to take my nap today, I tried, but I ended up, somebody called, and ended up being on a call. It's time for me to go home and see my family. Catch you tomorrow. Classic dilemma. So your alarm set for 3.30 and you wake up on your own at like three. Do you go back to sleep for 30 minutes? I don't know. Knowing that when you wake back up in 30 minutes, you might be even more tired or do you just get up? Even though I guess that's about four and a half, four and a half or five hours of sleep. Yeah, so which one would you do? I got up because I didn't want to risk falling back asleep and either not waking up or feeling super groggy. And uh, I got to meet a trainer this morning at 4.30. This is called Root Reboot. It's supposed to reset your root chakra, it's like energy juice, beet juice, and beet green juice is supposed to be the stuff. Uh, my wife was doing a bunch of research yesterday telling me all about it. So I'm gonna rock some beet juice. One thing I know about beet juice is that it's a major stamina booster. So I should have some more energy for the workout today. What's up world? Rocking it on the elliptical here, warming up. Can someone provide me the plan for the first quarter of YouTube 
content for 2021. I was just told that we're blasting arms and abs today. I'm excited. Can't you see how excited I am? That's my excited face. I figure I'll also uh, document this little part of my life. So with the trainer this morning, I committed to 12 weeks. I did some before pictures, so I might as well share them with the world too. Um, Cause I'm gonna kinda, I don't know if I'm necessarily doing a 12 week transformation, but it's definitely time to tighten things up. Here's where I'm at currently. I'm not in bad shape, but like this, look at that. Back here, I do not love these handles. So we're just gonna tighten it up. We'll see where we get in uh, 12 weeks. All right, so it's time to get ready, shower, go to the office, get in the, in the flow. I just went in to get my clothes and Jacqueline was awake, laying in bed. I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty tempting to just wanna crawl in bed with my beautiful wife and just lay there and enjoy the morning. And uh, I have to remind myself why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's the week between Christmas and New Year's. Nobody would blame me for slacking, taking a day, taking a morning. But uh, the reality is we have a big mission here and it kind of got me thinking, you know, it almost feels a little bit crazy sometimes what it is that we're trying to do. You know, I think about it as like, okay, well, what, what Jeff Bezos did for consumer retail sales, what, what Elon Musk has done for renewable energy, just total disruption and redefinition of entire categories is literally what Entra is trying to do for education. That's what I'm trying to do for education. I, I think that if we can teach people differently, we can heal so much of the world's challenges, so many of the world's challenges. It's a huge mission and it's a little bit crazy from the standpoint of like how big I allow the vision to be in my mind. Because what I find is the more and more I go, the more I work, frankly, the less I need to work for the money, the more, it's not even worth getting out of bed in the morning for small dreams, small goals, small visions. The motivator becomes an increasingly large mission to positively impact more and more people. I don't know, the more I do it, it's not about making a buck online. Like that sounds, so banal to me. I think we can change the world and I, and I hesitate to actually share, not even change the world, even that's a cliche. I think we can pivot the world. And again, it's I hesitate to share that vision because it, even though it's what drives me, it might sound monomaniacal, it might sound, you know, insane. Hell, I mean, somebody might say, this guy's schizophrenic. He's, making this vlog about how he's gonna pivot the entire world and you know, just like Elon Musk is gonna make us, you know, potentially multi-planetary civilization, this guy thinks he's gonna help us become a, you know, more individually empowered civilization and, and redefine relationships to value and resources and ethics and service, almost in a, you know, in like a kind of a spiritual movement sense. So here I am, I'm saying it, I'm saying it out loud because again, it's, it's the only reason to get up in the morning, I think. Do really, really, really big things. Somebody's gotta do it. Civilization is advanced on the basis of pretty loony people doing pretty loony things that in hindsight become obvious. And, and you know, if anything, I guess I'm willing to be a little bit of uh, a sacrifice to say, hey, this is what an insane level of vision looks like. Because if I can expand the vision of anybody who sees what I'm doing by even 1%, that's a step in the direction of that brave new empowered world that I think is a lot happier and healthier place. And so I'll, I'll take the I'll take the flack and the, the judgment and the skepticism that may come with it. In fact, I'm the more this the more this advances, I'm kind of learning to thrive off of it. On that note, I'm not going to crawl back in bed with my beautiful wife. I'm going to get ready and I'm gonna go attack the day. Let's get it. All right, so we have a video shoot going down. We're getting set up here. I guess we're shooting at the piano, right guys? Yes, sir. That's the set right there. Those are the guys. So this is Parker. <laughs> What's up guys? This is Wyatt. There's a decent chance on any given vlog that Parker edited it, so. You're kind of getting to know him too. Uh, yeah, so we're shooting, what are we shooting today, guys? Yeah. We're not actually sure what we're shooting. That's how well prepared. Everything you see from me is very well prepared. 
trust me, by other people, and sometimes it's relayed to me with advance notice. Sometimes, honestly, we just make it up as we go. Which entrepreneurial lesson, get ready to make a lot of shit up as you go, because probably the only reliable plan in entrepreneurship is you can plan to not always have a crystal clear plan, but you still gotta execute. And this is a big deal. Guys, tell me I'm wrong. How many people do we know who are, are not successfully entrepreneuring, entrepreneuring, which is a verb now, I just declared it, um, because they're waiting for more clarity, or they're waiting for a better plan, or they're waiting for you know, a straight line to go straight down. What is it, clarity is made through decision? Clarity is made through decision. We're gonna go with that. We're gonna go with that. That is, that is how it is now said. I don't know how it was said before. I don't, I don't remember. And look at this. This is what plans look like. What are we, we're shooting a retargeting video. We're shoot, we already did this, right? Can-Am ad with the CTA for a landing page. We already did yes. that, right? Okay, what else we got? Let's scroll up, let's show the world. We have ads. Jeff's ad that he created. Oh yeah, I wrote some scripts. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 16 years old. That's over 25 years of entrepreneuring. And probably the most valuable part of that for you is that I spent almost 15 of those years as a royal screw up. I failed at close to a dozen businesses, lost millions of dollars, just totally ate it for over a decade. And from that, I learned every valuable hard lesson that you could possibly learn about how to build a successful business. <clears throat> That's how you do it right there. No script. And that notes this guy talking. What's up? I have one minute. I'm between interviews, changing shirts. If I have back to back interviews, I, uh, for the podcast, I, I bring different shirts so that when they get released on YouTube, you don't have interviews side by side where I look, well, you know, where I'm wearing the same clothes. But uh, anyway, yeah, I just interviewed this guy. He's a, a coach in Northern Norway, but he's got like a 100,000 person YouTube channel and a, a really a booming business. Super cool guy. Now I'm about to interview a guy named Carlos Reyes uh, who came here as a illegal, illegally as a boy. And he's gone on to found 27 companies, seven of them multi-million dollar companies. Total stud, and uh, I'm stoked to hear what he has to say. So I'm gonna hop to that. I actually am due on it right now. Catch you later. It's nap time. Uh, it's like 5.30, and I'm going home at like, I told Jacqueline I'd be home by 6.30. And so normally, I haven't been able to take my nap today. I don't get to take them every day, but I definitely need one today. Normally this late in the day, I would just go, ah, I'll just go home, so. 30 minute nap and then I'll probably work another, I can just like wrap up some loose ends for 10 or 15 minutes and then head home. The next day. Quick check in, it's a day off, New Year's Day actually and uh, we are doing something other than working. It's kind of fun. Making my famous, they're, they're world famous within a small world of six people that are my family. Uh, ribs, St. Louis ribs with a nice rub. Little apple juice, white grape juice, honey base. It's a multi step process, takes about two and a half hours out on the Traeger. There's my son Jace. He loves when I shove cameras in his face. And there's my better half peeling potatoes. Oh, yeah, we're making homemade french fries. We're making our crock pot, four cheese, mac and cheese. There's my daughter. What's she doing? Oh, look, she's curling her hair, adding more beauty to beauty. She, lo she also loves when I shove the camera in her face. Yeah, that's life on a non-work day. All right, well, so I'm committed to not working today, which also means not vlogging, at least that much today, but figured it would be good to capture something other than work for a change, so uh, yeah. Happy New Year! Here's to a better one for most people than last year. I don't know if this is good or bad, but we actually had a pretty amazing 2020, although I know a lot of people didn't, and I'm sensitive to that, so. Here's to a great 2021.
cookies, homemade fries, happy family, missing one.